Good evening again. Um, I will speak on behalf of part of the group uh, of Casa Bastione working on the bioarchaeology and basically we are working together to get a bioenvironmental and paleoeconomic reconstruction of the sites. Some of you were already here this morning. I will be quick on the site just to know that Casa Bastione is really in the middle of Sicily. We can say it's up the array, array mountains. And today the landscape is, I mean, very different probably from what it was several years, uh, several thousand years ago. So we can see high level of anthropization of the area. And the, um, there is still uh, probably a small part of uh, relictual uh, vegetation, the Oakwood site, and it's very close to another archaeological site, but what we see all around the site is basically um, all the land used for, for farming and purposes. About the, this small part of modern vegetation that is still probably the natural one, we identified uh, today, and also um, Professor uh, Basta Lamantia identified uh, after the, the, on the paper of 2014, the presence of garig, xeric, grassland, and prairie. But for what you concern the species that usually we can detect on archaeological sites, we can find Bashan Topwoods, evergreen woody species, and uh, rhamnus and riparian forests, also because. Uh, there is still a big part of, um, of a river. We are on the Marlo Valley, as Enrico told this morning, and here, on, um, on the very close to the site, we used to have also the Lago Stello. Lago Stello is a, um, a lake that was brought in the 30s, and uh, its origin is probably um, the same as the as Lago di Perbusa. So we'll see later that we are trying also to 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 see if there is still a sequence there. So basically, we're still having some comparison. As Professor Professoressa Mercury was saying, we always try to find um, uh, comparisons, of course, with the natural sequences uh, uh, for what to concern the archaeological uh, sequences. And what we can use here is the sequence from uh, Perbusa Lake that is not very far from the site. It's just uh, to about 20 kilometers. So basically, we can have a good idea of how the, the area was in terms of uh, climate and vegetation. Unfortunately, the situation about the archaeobotanical analysis for prehistoric sites, um, I mean, from the Paleolithic until the Iron Age, we just have, uh, in uh, 2015, we had a poster about that, only 19 sites. And the number today is not uh, changed very, very much. So, and, and the problem is also that uh, we do have some information from 19 sites, but it's not always uh, well published or fully published. So sometimes we just have some uh, short notice about what was recovered in the in the um, in the sites. So basically, this is really um, difficult for us then to find and to um, put also the site of Casa in a, a system of. Um, in, in the comprehensions, in comprehension, especially of the paleoeconomic data that we have. Um, yeah. So, um, Enrico already told this morning, Casa Bastione is a site that um, covers about 500 years, so from the second part of the second millennium BC until the beginning of the second millennium BC. Um, several uh, field campaigns have been uh, uh, finished so far. One, one was uh, one month ago when we finished our uh, sampling also of the um, archaeobotanical uh, record. And uh, thanks to the use of uh, several, um, several uh, C14 dates, we do have a quite reliable, reliant um, comparison for what to concern the chronology. So we, we have this, this is quite important also for the sequence of the wooden charcoals. Um, Archaeofinal remains have already been published. Um, for what to concern the, um, the first phase of the village, so the end of the Copper Age village, uh, archaeologists archeo found basically <coughs> the, the most, of, most part of the remains belong to Obis Cabra, sheep and goat, exactly like in Castelluccio. Uh, the percentage is among uh, 55 and 66 percent also for the second phase, for the early Bronze Age phase. Um, we do have a, a good amount of uh, SUS, and according to their, their studies, um, it's not clear if it's SUS domesticus, as we saw, for example, for Castelluccio, but they're hypothesizing too that it could be poor. And finally, we have um, a good amount of deer, 
and this is quite uh, unusual for for, the, for this phase, at least for what we know of the archaeological analysis of the other sites in Sicily that are mainly the coastal sites, because uh, usually wild animals starting from the end of the Copper Age and then Bronze Age are uh, not as much as represented as here. So we have uh, the deer is almost double, the presence of deer is almost double as cattle, and it is quite, um, quite different from what we knew. Um, we can say that percentages are, are not very different in the second phase, so during the, the Bronze Age. Uh, only the, um, the number of wild animals seems a bit uh, lower. For what to concern the, the um, uh, death age percentages, we do know that um, ovens were, were uh, killed, um, especially during one, two years and three, four years, so also here the, the consumption of meat. And uh, there is also uh, signs of boiling of some uh, bones from uh, from the analysis, and uh, sometimes they are also exposed to direct fire. So it means that, of course, meat was was consumed. But of course, they also had um, their practice, as we saw also in uh, Castelluccio. So here, uh, several um, uh, sieves were also found. As Enrico told this morning, also uh, some spoons. So many things, and let's know that thing that um, the activities of uh, the processing of milk uh, was quite uh, common in, uh, in Casa Bastione. And here on the right, um, upright, you can see also deer's antler because deers were, um, were exploited not only for meat but uh, for sure also for the use of uh, antler. And there are several, uh, several uh, objects also, some several signs of working of, uh, of antlers. And according to the studies of the archaeologists, um, uh, the, the deers were uh, also uh, just uh, brought to the, to the sites in pieces, so basically they had some butchering activities before and then they moved it to, to the site. Archibotanical analysis just started this year. Um, I, I have to say that uh, the archaeological analysis were preceded by the um, working on the top and then we moved also to wood charcoals and seeds. So basically, we um, uh, we made samples on um, on the, all the archaeological soils, wooden poles, of course, pits and hearts, and now we're starting, like one month ago, also the, um, uh, to to sample the pollen from the archaeological section. So we are going to have always the we we will try to have the two different um, the two different proxies, even if. We have to say that uh, Casa Bastione soils are quite difficult for that because they are extremely dry, sometimes they look like rock, so we'll see if something happens. And this is also, I want to thank all the people that are working for, uh, for this, not only Arcos of course, but the, net, the French network of Biodip Max about biodiversity, the Listep, the Department of uh, Salento, and the uh, Museum de l'Histoire Naturelle de l'Empire Historique uh, with uh, Nathalie Combrian Ebu, she is the palynologist. So what we can say so far is that there are several traces of burning on the on the wood charcoals, and this is of course because most of the samples that we analyzed so far belong to the wooden poles and to the uh, abandonment uh, layers that were exposed to, to fire. So sometimes the the preservation is not very good and identification identification is quite difficult. And most of the wood charcoals that we recovered are uh, of um, less than half a centimeter, but we had the chance also to find some, uh, some almost um, entire poles of several centimeters. And this is uh, on the right, uh, the diagram is on um, the numbers, it is about the, um, the layers, the number of the layers, not the numbers of the, of the single specimens, because um, it was not considered reliable, the absolute number, as we had different sampling methods, so we just considered the different uh, layers. And we found um, mostly the presence of oaks, also here, probably um, the Shidus oaks, or robur type, but we also find, found um, a low percentage of uh, other, other species, like Capinus, Ulmus, Populus, uh, Annus. Uh, oaks are Mm, the most represented uh, species, in the, especially for the ancient phase. Um, I have to say that the identification of, of Quercus of Ox is quite difficult sometimes, so we um, can say that probably most of them are, are by, um, uh, by the Shidus Ox, but some of them could also be by evergreen Ox. But what we, what we can say is anyway that all the uh, hot poles, as we saw for probably for Castelluccio, but also for the site of Morgantina, even if it's like Bronze Age, 
uh, we only find oaks, so this is quite uh, quite interesting because it's always the same species. Um, for the early Bronze Age phase, um, uh, we have uh, more different species, and the only um, hot pool that we analyzed so far is not from oak, but is probably Carpinus betulus or beam. So it means that probably at least one of the uh, hot pools of the second phase is uh, is not is not made by oak. About the seeds, um, it's not very. I mean, they are not very relevant, just in some um, in some um, context. For example, with the early Bronze Age phase, we have the presence of a beet, where we found most of the Triticum and all the rest. We identified the Triticum digocum, it means underweight, and, and it is very interesting, the, especially for the second phase, the presence of several. Uh, pulses, uh, these big size pulses we're still uh, trying to define lateral specia. Um, but it's quite interesting because there are some signs of Brugus of Finanus that for the prehistory so far has, has not ever been identified. And it's a specific uh, bean beetle that is present and only in uh, so far, just in this case. The other um, study, I, I will be quick because for those who are more um, curious. Uh, we'll give a paper tomorrow morning in the Athen uh, Structures uh, um, session. Uh, we are working together with the biologists of Marseille, uh, trying to identify what kind of reeds were used in the Athen Structures, because we are used to say just reeds, but of course reeds is a, like a big world with several species. One of, the, one of those is Avundodonax, it is one of the uh, most common today, also because uh, it's very strong and it's very useful in general for its, uh, its features for, for the buildings. So we hypothesized that there was a Mundodonax already at the end of the Copper Age in Sicily. And this is, I mean, quite important for us because uh, biologists are unanimous in saying that um, Mundodonax is not a native species for Mediterranean area, that it arrived from, uh, from Asia but they don't know exactly when, so we're trying to give some answers, maybe from the archaeological side, to say maybe in Sicily we already had it in the third millennium BC, then of course maybe even before. And just, yes, a quick uh, spot of the Quercus silex leaf, probably, on the top. This is interesting for us also, because I, I said before about the, diff, diff, it is very difficult to identify the, the, um, the oaks, what kind of oaks, so maybe having also other kind of uh, information is, uh, is useful. So finally, the last part is about palynology. Uh, I told you that we just made the, the samples on the archaeological soils. Um, we are still waiting for the results from the Lagostello. We hope that the, the sequence is, as I said before, the same as Pergusa Lake. And I think this would be really of great interest in like, comparing the natural sequence with the archaeological sequence. The last thing that we're doing about pollen is um, a monitoring system, a modern monitoring system that Natalie Comboria Nebu is uh, heading. It's a, it's a research that she's been uh, carrying out in the Mediterranean area for some years. Basically, she is monitoring and quantifying pollen grain uh, in um, in different sites. In Sicily, we have we also in Patelleria, we in all around uh, uh, the Mediterranean area, and it evaluates the plant pollination over several years. So we uh, basically we collect pollen every month and every year from each site, and this is to evaluate the biodiversity change in the Mediterranean from the pollen data. So this will give us some answers for the uh, answer from the reaction of the vegetation to the possible change today and we hope to compare that with the, um, with, the, um, with the past. So basically we can see through a modern model if we can find some comparison with something that happened in, uh, in the past. This is to sum up uh, what we found so far. So um, um, I think this we have also many not identified species for the woods, and we still have a lot to process um, in terms of our archaeobotanical research. So probably some other species. Uh, uh, thank you. Some other species. Uh, we will find some other species, and we sure for sure have to um, go further with the identification of pulses. And so basically, this is the first uh, conclusions that we can uh, we can have about that. So. Uh, as already the archaeological, uh, the archaeological data were saying, we can imagine a site that was in a dense of wood, and we know for sure there were several water sources. I didn't say that we found in the archaeological records some riparian uh, species, 
Um, as I told you before, the use of vegetal animal resources is quite different from the coastal sites that we know for the same faces. The only site that we can compare with for the, um, for the seeds is Mugulufa site, but where only some uh, small samples were taken, so we, we are not sure that we can really uh, have um, a, good, uh, a good comparison for, for our site. And the diet was made, of course, by pulses and cereals, as we could imagine, but we still have to analyze better the system of conservation and the process of the pits. Um, we still don't have any data from the pits that, uh, that Professor um, uh, Mercury was asking this morning, the pits, to know. So once we have some, uh, some answers from Michael Plan to from there, we, we see that there, are, there is probably a different use of plant resources. And finally, we are waiting to have like the first results from the pollen and from the prehistoric sites that are really... So in, I think it's easy, it would be the first time to have uh, these two different uh, kind of proxies, so, so close to the prehistoric site, archaeobotanical data, and uh, the lacustrine pollen segments. So let's see. Thank you. Thank you.